In this video, I will teach you how to make this exact simulation using Blender and the Flip Fluids add-on. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing S, then Shift Set to scale the cube only on the X and Y axis, and then select the light and press X to delete. And this is going to be our initial fluid. And for this tutorial, we're going to use the Flip Fluids add-on, which you can enable in the uh, add-on settings if you have bought the add-on. If not, you can just use the uh, default fluid settings. Okay, so let's start off with the fluid, which will be for the initial fluid with no inflow. And then press Shift A. And we're going to add a UV sphere. And then let's add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons so that it looks smoother. Apply it, and then we can add some smooth shading as well. And then press number one, press G to grab and S to scale. And then next, we can use the array modifier to duplicate the sphere. So let's set it to four for now. And then press uh, numpad seven for a top view. And then press G then Y to grab it on the Y axis. And then we can duplicate the array modifier. So press shift D to duplicate the array modifier. Then we're going to set it to the y-axis instead. And then press G, then Y to grab it on the y-axis. And then press R, set, then 45 to rotate it 45 degrees on the z-axis. And then we can save before we continue. I'm just going to call it tutorial. You can save it wherever you want on the computer. And then next, we need to duplicate the spheres on the z-axis as well. So press Shift D. And then uh, let's set it to the z-axis. And uh, we can set it to 1.1. And then we need to go in to the uh, physics. And we're going to set the type of the spheres to fluid so that they just fall down and uh, do not emit any additional water. And then we can set the start frame at 50. And then next, we need to apply these modifiers. So press Ctrl A to apply. And then we need to separate them. So press Tab, then P to separate. And then press Tab to go back to object mode. And then set origin to geometry so that they all have their own individual origin points. And the good thing about adding the physics before we separate them is that they now all have the uh, flip fluid settings set up. Now we just need to change the trigger frames for each of the spheres so that they fall down at uh, different times. So you can just speed up. I just uh, added five frames for uh, each sphere and then gradually went up until we're at the top of the uh, spheres. And then at the uh, top, I gave many of them the uh, same trigger frame so that we get a uh, cool finale at the end of the simulation. So I set uh, these at frame 145 and these five at uh, 150. Okay, and then next I'm going to duplicate one of the uh, spheres. So press Shift D to duplicate. And then press set to move down the set axis and S to scale. And this one is going to fall at the end and make a huge splash. So let's set the uh, trigger frame to uh, 155. Okay. And then I'm going to save one more time. So press Control Shift S to create another save in case you want to go back to one of the previous saves. And then press Shift A and add a cube. And this is going to be the domain of the simulation and uh, the border of the simulation. Okay. And then press S, then Shift Set to scale it only on the X and Y axis. And then G, then Set to move it on the uh, Z axis. I'm also going to press Tab to go into edit mode. And then go to face selection and move the top face on the set axis. So press G, then set to grab it on the set axis. Okay, and then next, 
we uh, are going to go into the flip fluid domain settings so go to domain and one of the most important things to enable in the flip fluid add-on is to enable the white water simulation which gives us foam bubbles and spray and then let's set the emission rate to 250 and the spray emission speed to 1.5 which is the default settings that the uh, flip fluids developers use for their simulations okay and then next we can go to the uh, top and for the resolution we're just going to use uh, 65 for now and then bake at a higher resolution later okay so let's uh, bake and I'm going to bake until frame 350 and then we can do a test bake with a low resolution I obviously sped up this part it can take quite a long time and once the test bake is done you can see that the animation works and this is the time to edit the animation of these spheres as well if you want to so as you can see it works great so now it's the time to set up the materials the lighting and the camera so uh, let's go into a rendered view and as you can see there's no lighting so we need to go into the render settings let's switch to cycles which is better for water and then use the GPU if you have one. If not, just keep using the CPU. And I'm going to set the number of samples to 300 for now. And then for the lighting, we can use a background image. So let's go to the world properties. And then uh, click the uh, yellow button next to color. And then open. And then downloads. And I'm going to use an HDRI called Chelsea Stairs. You can find a lot of uh, free HDRIs. If you go to HRI Haven and so on. And then next, I'm just going to add a uh, glass material and set the roughness to zero and then set the IOR to 1.333, which is the IOR of water. Okay, and then next, we can go to the film settings and make the background transparent because we won't be needing that and then we can add a background later on the point is that we use the background image for lighting and not as the actual background okay so uh, next we're going to uh, save and then we can set up the camera so press ctrl alt numpad zero and then press n and then camera to view and then we can go a little bit backwards. And then let's do a uh, test render. This is, of course, with the lower resolution of the uh, fluid simulation. So we're going to um, improve that later. And then let's set it to a uh, square dimension. So you can set it to uh, 3000 times 3000 or a uh, lower resolution if you want to. And then make sure that the whole simulation is within the frame of the camera. We can also go into render view and play with the color of the water. You can of course not see the foam and so on in render view. You have to do a final render for that. And you can give it kind of a uh, bluish color if you want to. And then you can do another test render to see whether or not the color goes well with the foam and so on and I think it does and then next I'm going to go to the uh, render settings and then performance and then if you have a uh, GPU you can increase the tile size if you just have a CPU I recommend just keeping it at uh, 64 and then next we can select the uh, fluid and then go into the uh, physics settings 
to make sure that the domain is selected. And then I'm going to increase the resolution. If you have a uh, fairly slow computer, I do not recommend exceeding 200 as the resolution. But uh, since I have a uh, pretty fast computer and some time to wait, I'm going to set it to 450. With this resolution, I spent the whole night baking and uh, that was on a, I would say, fairly good CPU. It's on a uh, i9 9700K, I think. Okay, so uh, once the camera is set up and everything looks fine, I'm going to do the final bake and continue the recording the next day. Okay. I'm going to save one more time and then reset the uh, bake and then bake. Okay, and this is what it looks like once the bake is done. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. And then if you want some additional lighting, you can also add a, a sun. You can press Shift A and add a sun and then press R to rotate and uh, just see what you like for the final render. At this point, you can just experiment with the different colors and the different types of lighting and get the result that you want. Now, before we start the render, I'm just going to turn on the noising to reduce the amount of noise in the render. And then I'm going to choose a folder for all of the PNGs that you can later turn into an MP4 file. I have a tutorial on that, but I recommend rendering as PNG first and then convert it into a video later in case something crashes. Now let's start the rendering of the animation. And before we do that, make sure to save one more time and then go to solid view so that it's not running in the background. And then go to render and then render animation. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll post more Blender tutorials very soon. So uh, thank you guys for watching and subscribe.